Show off your robot to thousands on the front page of Twitch. Submit your robot reveal video to Fun Premiere Night by going to tinyurl.com forward slash fun2019 info to learn more. Uh, we are going to talk about a topic that overtakes a ton of FRC conversations in the first couple weeks after kickoff. Um, that is the robot in three days, minimum competitive concept type of teams or quick builds. Um, Karthik, last week you provided some awesome insight on your breakdown of Robot in Three Days teams from the compassalliance.org. But let's talk more about if programs like Robot in Three Days and Minimum Competitive Concept or just quick builds in general are good for first. And then also, uh, did the U.S. Coast product MCC Plus robot put out this year go a little bit too far and end up being a cash grab, as some in the community have said? Chat, we want to hear from you as well, so make sure you tag First Updates Now in chat with your thoughts. I mean, so when I saw this, I, I got pumped when um, West Coast Products released their MCC or their MCC Plus, because every year it's been really cool. And I remember just how wowed I was by what they did in 2016, especially. And I mean, they always make a really fun video. And it just, it, it, I was super excited that I went on Chief. I mean, I found it on Chief, but then I started reading responses on Chief. And there was like a lot of backlash, which is kind of surprised because WCPs always seemed like the like hip supplier like the cool one that everyone likes you know and so i was a little bit blown away by that and whatever and it's like i'm just stunned that there's backlash about this because yeah like i get it it's not a true minimum competitive concept bot it's a little bit more complicated or maybe a lot more complicated but does that really matter like i get that the naming and the website are a bit confusing but i don't really think that's big of a deal like teams already overshoot the game as is and like there's absolutely a market for this type of type of bot because like there's some teams out there who need and want like the every bot from 118 and that fills a real niche right there but there's other teams and like i i say this from experience having worked at vex and just you know hearing from teams during the build season and the amount of phone calls we got saying hey do you have like instructions on how to build an intake or do you have instructions on how to pick up this game piece and whatever and so like I would, you know, I'd, I'd email with them or talk to them and just be like, hey, let's try something super simple. And they'd be like, no, I want something better. You know, it's like, okay, well, I don't have time to like design that for you. But like, there's teams who want something more advanced, but still mainly out of COTS parts with instructions. And so like the MCC Plus totally nails that area for them. There's If there's teams who want this stuff, why shouldn't West Coast products put it out there? And like, in general, I might have some concerns about RI3D and MCC kind of hurting prototyping processes for teams because like teams don't need to do all the experimentation that they once used to because there's so much on YouTube. But like at the same time, there's some teams who don't have the resources to do that type of prototyping who just have to like order one thing and just deal with it for the season. So like seeing what's best and learning from some examples, that's really beneficial. So like overall, I've come to accept these robots and I'm glad the teams have access to the resource. And like West Coast Products does not have to do this. Like this is a lot of work to just, I mean, I don't think I need to explain that to anyone on how difficult it is to build a robot of that quality in such a short period of time. Like that is hard stuff and they don't need to do it. And like for everyone saying it's a cash grab, I mean, they're like a company that's trying to make money. And I don't see it as a, like, I would consider a cash grab if they were trying to sell something that didn't work for the game, something that was terrible and trying to take people's money for that. Like they're selling a solution that may be complicated, but I don't think it's, too complicated for the teams that are buying it and I, you know i don't know i just think it's like there's like a little bit of caveat to here but i just thought that the backlash was a little bit harsh you know all because it was named mcc instead of like mcc plus plus oh see yeah huh, funny really funny and uh, no okay never mind um into the bigger picture of ri3ds and stuff like you know there are some terrible ones out there now and there's there's a, a lot of ri3d so there's actually gonna be some bad ones but like i think a lot of the terrible ones aren't actually intended to be resources they're just some alums who want to build a cool robot and stay up a few night stay up all night for a few days and that's their frc season so if that's what they want to do more power to them like i don't you know i used to be the mindset of like oh any ri3d that isn't providing resources is a waste it's like well it's their goal isn't to provide resources so i don't you know i'm not going to really shame them for that at the same time I am hugely in love with the RI3D groups out there who do use the process to create valuable resources for teams. Um, Snow Problems and the University of Waterloo, I'm looking at you. Also, the EveryBot from 118 and the MCC Plus, man, there's a bill of material, there's instructions. Like, that stuff is super valuable. And, like, it's not just valuable if someone wants to build the whole thing, but just to look at that intake and get an idea for geometry and be like, oh, that works that way. 
that's valuable. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of all for this stuff. Like, yeah, I, there are some terrible RI 3 ds out there, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Yeah, no, I mean, I think what's, what's interesting is we've talked about RI 3 ds We've talked about quick builds before. Um, and sort of the the MCC, just this general concept before on the show. I think the reason it's come back up so strongly is um, because we've, you know, this particular MCC stuck out as like, is that really the minimum? Um, which is obviously, you know, its own conversation. Yes, apparently I'm taking over the overlay. Sorry, y'all. Uh, just, you know, exercising world domination here. Um, I think... The more that we kind of talk about these community resources, we have to remember that this is a, still a pretty new concept in the first community. Yes, it's been, what, 2013 was the first robot three days, if I remember correctly, um, which is more than one student's lifetime on a team. But in terms of like how we develop, you know, how we develop first set of resources for teams, I mean, it's still kind of new. Um, and obviously that means all the teams that do it are still figuring out what that means for the teams that they serve. Um, I, I think that from my perspective in that couple of year journey, I will pick on 1923 a lot. Uh, and I will try to maybe try to tell our story as a, as a piece of my perspective here. Um, we were a, not quite a COTS team. We were a, had to build it ourselves and didn't have a ton of resources teams, whether that was machining or stuff, or money, or anything like that. Um, and when we kind of got this robot in three days plus COTS revolution system in, in the same couple of years, um, we actually, uh, Karthik is the one who verified this for me, at one point bought more VersaFrame than one of the iFi offices had in stock, um, which is one of my favorite 1923 stories because Karthik calls me and goes, are you building a house? Like, what are you doing? Uh, we're actually going to build ourselves a new shop at a VersaFrame. Um, it's a, like, that's a very true story for us. I think we've been through a really interesting evolution where we absolutely used resources like this or should have used them when we didn't. Um, we are absolutely a team that when all of this stuff started, we did not have the ability to prototype quickly to iterate on stuff. We just built something and hoped that it worked. Um, and spoiler alert, that didn't work very well for us because we didn't think through our problems right. Um, resources like Robot in Three Days, Minimum Competitive Concepts, any sort of quick build, um, and even the old Build Blitz resources are super helpful to help teams figure out not only the prototyping process, but then when it's pointing out a sale for something like this. And I, I want to point out VersaFrame as my example because it's really where it clicked for me. Is like, for some teams, this might be a great quick prototyping option, but for other teams, this might be the only way they can build a robot where all the corners are square, and that's okay. Like, I will roast 1923 by myself. Our 2014 robot, we just bought a bunch of, like, aluminum. We got box, we got L channel, whatever, and we're drilling our own holes. We have no machining in any way, shape, or form. We got a, maybe a drill press sometimes if it turns on, and everything else is hand tools. So our 2014 robot was this like horrible, wobbly, uh, it was awful, the worst. Um, and I like, it has a special place in my heart because it's just so bad, but <laughs> it's, it was, it was not a good robot. We were not following a good engineering process to design it, to construct it, anything. We would just like drill random holes in corners, hope they lined up. And when they didn't, we drill a new, it was just sad. Um, we totally fell into the trap of kits or the easy stuff or whatever are for other teams. We're too good for that. Spoiler alert, past Libby. No, you weren't. You absolutely were not. Um, in 2015, we bought a stupid amount of VersaFrame, as previously discussed, and... I'm sort of the 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 reason I bring up the example of sometimes it's the only team, way a team can make a robot where all the corners are the correct angle and not a random number. Like it, it made us better. It made our robot a little more robust, a little more reliable. And I see the MCC, the Minimum Competitive Concept, or MCC Pluses, as a way to 
show off the type of build you can do with those products. And that's where I'm okay with it. Um, I, I agree that, um, I, or not, I agree. I see the point that teams are making where it's like, oh, well, if you just give me a printout of everything I need to buy, then everyone's going to look like that. But there are totally systems or, or times in the first community where that's still a really good robot. And there's no reason to be ashamed of learning the engineering process from something that is a little more, not necessarily kit based, but COTS based or instruction based. Um, I, in our experience as a team, it actually made it so that when we did get machining resources, we were better at the engineering process because we knew from the fundamentals how to build something correctly or how to prototype something and try again. Whereas when we just been wasting aluminum and hoping we drilled the hole in the right place, we didn't get the chance to go back and, and rebuild and improve. But with something where you can more quickly adjust like a COTS solution or a kit based solution, I think there's a lot of really nice learning a team can do. And if that's the right phase in their cycle of years as a team, then showing off that type of a resource to them can be really, really beneficial. I know 1923 wouldn't be where it is right now in terms of going through an engineering process if we hadn't needed to struggle with, you know, some of the other stuff, learning how to work with COTS parts, learning how to, you know, to build really the true basics. And I think sometimes teams get stuck in the like, kits are for other teams. I'm too good for that. And And in a lot of cases, it's, not a good plan for them. They'll, they'll get a little more out of their season if their goal is to learn about the engineering process by going through one of those kind of kit-based builds. At least in my thoughts. So coming out of our uh, chat, we've just got a couple of um, responses. Uh, one coming from Electronica One, which is also, don't or wasn't, but I'm gonna say it as Karzik, like, don't you think, the MCC Plus was released a touch late. Um, I mean, like, I don't really know that there's a schedule for this stuff. I think to maximize utility for teams, sure, it would have been better if it was released a little bit earlier, but also, like, man, they did a lot of work. Like, that is not, like, West Coast Products is in the middle, like, they're still running their company, you know? Like, there's still that going on. So, like, it takes a lot of time to put together a robot like that, which is seen by the plus, you know, in the MCC. So, yeah, sure, it could have been, it would have been better if it was earlier, but at the same time, I mean, and don't look a, a look a good gift horse in the mouth, I guess. You know, uh, uh, both man. I think there's. Oh, sorry. No, I go was going to say, I think there are teams who are still. I, I, I think there are probably more teams who are still at a point where they can benefit from some of the things you learn from quick builds, even if they might not build that exact robot, right? So yeah, it might be too late for you to go buy all that stuff and make that kit, and you sort of lose time, but. At the same time, there's still a lot to be learned from these builds that you could implement into your iteration process now. So I don't think it's, I, I, I'd always accept ideas and plans and thoughts from the community. All right, our next comment slash question from Boltman2019. I like RI3D for finding some mechanisms that work, then spinning them. What are you just gonna like turn them around? And then as for MCC, I think detracts from innovation, IMO. Uh, Libby? Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I see that pretty popularly as an opinion on on Chief or on you know different community platforms. I think what's every everybody's got their own opinion and that's totally fine and and it's up to each team to use the community resources like this as is going to best suit their their plan for the season and what they want to achieve out of the season. Um, I do agree wholeheartedly that any sort of quick build MCC RA three D whatever it is. Um, I really think that should be something that teams take and and move forward from. I know I can speak for our team where there are plenty of things that came off a robot in three days concept that we have then sat there and gone. Like, I think robot in three days, I don't know if they still use this, this slogan anymore, but they put it perfectly when they used to say, we did it in three days. You have six weeks, like make it better, go take it up, like make it take off. I think that's really a key component of it. So I, I completely agree of, of finding the mechanism and then, putting your own team's spin on it or addition to it. Uh, Tyler, I know you have a comment. Would you like to join us from Back yeah, in the Shadows? No, I, I just want to say we, we asked a little bit earlier what everybody's favorite uh, RA3D robot was, and uh, I think the winner is the 2018 EveryBot uh, that's on screen. 
because and I know and Karthik, we talked about this last week. I, I love this robot. Yeah, I mean, this thing scores better than probably what fifty percent of the field is going to score. It's the, the twenty eighteen every bot can. St- I, I just want that robot to play every year. Like I would just like be a team and be That'd like, be "Yo, every bot, come come on out." Absolutely. I also really like the sort of like subtitles um, that are like you can lean in between the stations and see what's going on. Like I, I for some, just the fact that that's coming up, like. As a drive coach, the number of teams who think you can't cross the lines between the glass is really interesting and funny in a sad way to me. So I just appreciate the little tidbits in the subtitles, uh, not related to the bots at all. Um, our One of our last things from chat, uh, Andrew Lawrence posts uh, at First Studies Now, not only do I love the RA3G slash MCC plus projects for teams, but I want to bring them back the best of all of them, which was the Vex Pro Build Blitz. Not only did Build Blitz provide high quality resources for teams with potential robot solutions, but what separated them from what we have today was the videos explaining the reasoning behind their engineering processes. Um, as a lot of you guys know, if you know what Build Blitz was, obviously Karthik and I were both involved with that. Um, Karthik on one of the, well, as you did strategy for both teams. I was going to say on one of the teams, but you were sort of across no, both. No, I no. Really, I only really did stuff for Paul's team. I don't know. I was really tired. I don't remember anything. Um, and I helped out with some of the back end, like blog and social stuff, which was a really cool experience to be a part of. And I completely agree with what you're saying, Andrew. I think what was so great about Build Blitz, and even in the next year, I thought, there was um, i thought the year after build list was better than the actual yeah like the, th- that was going to be the the resources that were put out the year after for build blitz in 2015 that were talking about how the how the you know game was broken down how you might prototype dip all the different components that go into that really early season stuff i completely agree that those were an amazing set of resources i wish that out of the RA 3D teams, we saw more of that and less of the reveal video. That's and, that, my my opinion. Yeah. 100. I know. I, I I agree with you, and that's why I love what Snow Problems does because they yes. release that breakdown of the game and they really go through this stuff. And I thought the U Waterloo group this year, last year the U Waterloo group didn't really impress me that much, but this year I was like, whoa, this is like really cool. Like all their videos, just like a nice overview of stuff. It was like very like, you know, like. Another one of those proud UW moments. That's hmm. that's that's a thing. They're not Absolutely. very often, but you know. Um, from C. Sherman, uh, as a student, I was opposed to MCC and other high-level kits. As an alum, I fully support them. I just want to see more robots doing well at competition. I mean, we could do a whole show on how people's perspectives on FRC change from be- before they're in the program to in the program as a student to when they're in the, uh, uh, a recent college alum to when they're in the professional workforce and those whole stages because like there's an evolution of thought for a lot of people so and mm-hmm. i'm down with that c sherman as as said earlier in the show i was an idiot like 10 years ago and that's okay and like how perspectives change on, on things like the first community is amazing i just want yeah. to shout out one other thing from chat have even though it has almost nothing to do with this uh i do miss bill blitz also bring back vine while you're at it totally agree and to the person who says we have tiktok now i only 50 percent agree with you um i miss vine and i have missed my opportunity to be a viner. So that's a regret I have in life. Hey guys, anyway, I, I want to bring up something real quick. What we're talking about. Go ahead, Tyler. Yeah. Um, so today, Michelle Long actually posted something. We were talking about the transitions between uh, students and mentors. And uh, I'll bring this up on screen here because uh, Michelle posted uh, that there is now a resource uh, from app.scholarly.com, which um, fortunately, it makes me register to get into it, so we won't do that. But uh, there's an opportunity, and I just posted it in chat. But uh, there's some modules in there in there that says uh, the modules are for you if you're a former team member transitioning into a mentor role with your old team, or uh, a mentor role with a new team, or you've worked with another user organization but are new to first. And there's a few other uh, options. This is, I think, this is long overdue, and I'm so happy that this is out now. Uh, because I'll tell you what, both from my end of transitioning from a student to uh, a mentor and a volunteer, and then also witnessing it happen, another one's this is long, long, long overdue and, and a great resource to have. Uh, so shout out to uh, the App Scholarly. I don't know if first made this. I, or... I take it. Can I tag in here? Yeah, uh, please. So Schoology is not specific to first but first has modules on schoology i've actually taken a couple um it's recommended to you as the uh lead mentor in terms of teams of a couple of different resources um it's sort of um as if like they're trying to kind of educate mentors perhaps you are not a teacher so 
um, you know, classroom management stuff, safety stuff, YPP stuff. So the Schoology server for FIRST is actually um, sort of pretty informative, but I like all of these new components that are aimed at different types of mentors. I've taken all of the previous stuff that they put forward for lead mentors, um, but I really appreciate FIRST for putting out resources aimed at non-lead mentors now on that school app. So uh, if you are a mentor or someone, uh, if you want to pass this to your team's mentors, uh, I have not looked at the new modules yet, but I'm excited about them based on the description. So definitely a cool look at um, kind of the different components first would like the mentors to sort of standardize on. So I'm definitely going to be taking a look at those and I would recommend you guys do the same. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.